first thing I do is I'm going to mark that straight cut so that we can cut from the same spot. Would you guys take that? <laughs> Every day? Alright, I'm going to put the ball back. Now we're going to take a tee, put it right on the ball of both feet. Right now, I'm really, I really like this ball position. So we're going to get a, some 
video. Now when I get video, the first thing I want to do is put that roar as parallel to the edge of my screen as I can possibly get. And I usually put it uh, just a, a little bit. You guys see that? So you put the two tees down, you get him back on line, but where's the ball going now? Okay. To the right. All right. Something I've heard from poor players over and over and over again is that when they're putting their absolute best, there's a sensation that they're hooking their butts. So if that was the case here, I would put the two keys up, he would punt for a little while until he felt like he was, he was okay with it. Then I would tell him, miss those two keys, but hit the left side of it. Sometimes I get players, and they're here, and I take the shaft, and I start to push the shaft down, and their shoulders go. Okay? And I say, well, relax your shoulder. These are players that don't have very flexible wrists. <clears throat> Those players will do a little better if you get them quicker than the right line of the back. Okay? But this is, this is perfect. Yeah. 
Weight should always be under the ankles. Under the ankles. If I stand straight up, I've got a straight line, my shoulder joint, my hip joint, my knee joint, my ankle. The ballast point of the body is directly under the ankles. Alright? You veterans, as we get older, our shoulders tend to turn in and we tend to lean forward. What happens is we start to address the ball with the weight out in the, on the front part of the foot, and that's where a lot of full swing issues come from. Here. Very square. All right. Mike, how long are your putting sessions with hmm? the player? How long are your sessions with the player? Like for a lesson, like with two hours. Time, two hours. Stay right there. <laughs> hey, back and posture, please. Back and posture. Now stay right where you are. Now, looking through the camera, what I see is I see this right arm higher than the left arm. That leans shoulder to the left. The back tilt, the shoulders up, gives that gives this uh, this arm a place to go. Much better. Now see if you can get that a little more tilt. Ah, there you go. Whenever you're ready, miss both feet. Feet, I want you to aim the lines at the, at the target. Yeah. Doesn't matter where the ball goes in. I'm not interested in that. All I want to see is if you can turn this ball in over the end. Don't you? All right, what does that tell you? His putter face was square. That impact. If the putter face was over or closed, that ball wouldn't have done that. Two, even if the putter face was dead square, if the putter was traveling left to right, it wouldn't have done that. So, that's probably as good a stroke as you can make. All right? When you start with the, the new filling of the arms, in. Do you have a lot of times where they'll have to reset here oh, to yeah, just get them yeah. into that? In fact, maybe for two weeks. Just, even on the doctor, I have to get them, yeah. get them later. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, there's only some afternoon where you or your student goes out to the putting green and for the life of them, they can't turn it over. Okay? So, if that's the case, don't let them move from right here. Understand what your tendencies are. My tendency, when I'm not turning the ball over, is I create a little bit too much rotation. So my forward stroke, I, I'm working hard to get the problem there. Right? It's pretty good right there. 
once you've got a player that can do that, now they're ready to start moving on. So what I'll do, we go out here, let's get you a birdie pot. Let's say from right out here. I want you to read the break of this pot. Did the ball turn over as we intended it to? Yes, by all means it did. We came up. You made a good stroke that it. You missed it, but you made a good stroke. Speed good? Yes, Speed is pretty good. Over two, actually. Over two, actually. Yeah, within a week, you or your student is going to start to see a pattern. That's where you need to go to work in order for you to make more time. Based on vision, dominant eye, and eye triangulation, every one of us sees this slope different. Some of us see less slope, some see more slope. We've got to figure out why or what. Now, when you go from a right to left breaking putt, your right eye is on the high side of the putt. But when we go to a left to right breaking putt, your left eye is on the high side of the putt. So when you go from a right to left breaking putt to a left to right breaking putt, your eyes switch places. You're not going to see it the same. One of the two sides, you're going to be pretty good. And the other side, you're going to have to make some adjustments. Now I'm going to show you the adjustment. All right.
Now, third, did you read it correctly? Well, we don't want to make it. I was going to say, what is that? Which is going to show us the shape of the stroke. Now, what we want to see, we want to see this putter come back right along this yellow line for a distance of three to six inches. Then the putter should start to move slightly to the inside of that line as you start your mark. The 
butter then is it returns, you come back to the yellow line, stay on this line, through impact, and out to a point just about the middle of the left foot. Then the putter should start to work slightly back to the inside as you continue your part. If your putter happens to stay on that yellow line beyond the middle of the left foot, we're not going to worry about that. A lot of great putters do that. If this putter crosses over that line and stays out there, or if it leaves this line before it gets to the middle of the left foot, then we want to find out what's going on. So we'll put uh, the second line here, we measure from the inside of the ball to the toe line, and that was measured at 204 putter head. Well, first thing we know is that every player on the tour stands two and a quarter to two and three quarters. So we're going to assume right here, this is going to be a pretty good distance from the ball. The next line we measure from the inside of the left foot over to this T, which is located right at the center of the golf ball. And this was measured at one third of the butter head. And based on the aim, I have to think that's going to be a really good position. The last line we measured from the inside of the left foot to the inside of the right foot. This was measured at two and one third of the putter head. And we did discuss the importance of not changing that width because once that width changes, your head position relative to the ball changes, which changes the name. So we put this putter in motion. saw a little lift. See that little lift right off? And then as we get back, it started to come in. See that? Right now we're perfect. And then it starts to go out to the yellow line. Now what, what is that? That's just the, the right arm, the right elbow coming away from the body. All right, and we're going to change directions. You see how that putter starts to work out over that line? What would cause that? It's left out. Exactly. Uh, but the ball's gone. I'm not going to worry too much about that. If I see a good player air in their path, I want them to air a little bit more in that direction. As long as the putter is moving away from you, you can be a great putter. But if that putter is moving towards you, that's where the problems are. Okay? So this looks pretty good. So when you say you don't want to move in toward me, like if the toe is still on that line, you heard. Yeah, that's yeah, the toe, thing toe. Toe. Okay. Now what we did, uh, we put we put the two T's real out here. You can see six inches behind the toe of the putter, six inches out in front of the heel, we put a T. Now, putting this putter back in motion. Now, you see that? Much better. Let's see what happens. Putter is perfect. Back to the line. <coughs> okay. Now, you see the toe of that putter is a little bit over. And it continues to go over. And that is in the transition between backswing and forward swing, both arms lift away from the body. That's all it is. From the front. I'm going to start by drawing. <coughs> Than 90 degrees. 
which means this ball position right there that we know to be one third of the putter head is without a doubt your best ball position. Okay? Now keep in mind that this T comes out to the middle of the golf ball, not the front or the back of the ball. And it's good if and only if this stays constant. Okay? We're going to take that part back and we're going to take it back six inches into the back swing. And we're going to draw another line right down the face of the part. Right back up this ruler. At the six inches end of the back swing, the face of the putter is now at 83 degrees. So in the first six inches of the back swing, the putter will come at 7 degrees to where it wants at the rest. The putter's got to continue back, it's going to change direction, it's going to come forward. Not bad right there. We're going to come back into impact. How about that? It's very good. Then we're going to go out six inches past him. And I'm going to draw another one right in the face of the cover. And right back up this ruler. Okay. So in the back swing, at six inches into the back swing, the cover opens seven degrees. And where it was at the rest. Six inches past, it closed six. We're looking for balance at this point. We'd like to see that stay within one or two of each other. That's, that's really good. And the total face rotation here is 13. Uh, we're looking for a number between six and 12. You're so close. Now, at this point, I wouldn't do anything, but I, I think that when you get tighter, when you get more connected, that's going to come down. Now, if this was constant, if, if we see 13 every time, what are we going to do? We're going to take a 60 degree toe hang and turn it into 13, or maybe even a face balance. Okay? But I think right now, this part is going to be really good for you. Uh, I think it's just going to be getting into that good setup. It's going to start to bring things in. Okay, this is the original setup position. Watch the right side of the screen. It's small, but it's big. We're looking first for the shaft of the putter to be an extension of the forearms. So you can see the shaft of the putter actually runs beneath the arms. Over here, now we're up into the arm right there. That's, that looks very good. From the tip of the right shoulder to the middle of the arm, right at the elbow, to the fingertips, the right arm angle is at 152 degrees. We want to see a max of 135. Over here, that looks good. Okay, 141. Now, I'm going to go to the back of the neck, to the belt, to the back of the shoe. We're looking for a spine angle to be between 113 and 123 degrees. Over here, back of the neck, to the belt, to the back of the shoe, 117 is perfect. We've got a dilemma here. Okay, spine angle is perfect, absolutely perfection, but the arm angle is too straight. What does that tell us? Better length. 
Hmm? Uh, uh, why angle of the cutter? Cutter is too short. Okay. If we added an inch, keep everything the same, we added an inch, his arms mm -hmm. would get more into the body. Mm -hmm. And then that would create a better number there. Okay? How tall are you? Five nine. Yeah, okay. So it so says the rule of thumb is five six to six feet is thirty-five. And I think that's a 34. Yeah. So just an inch. That'll get you into a really good setup. From the back, if we start at the lower part of the spine, we go to the collar of the shirt, we come back down the spine. We're looking for this to hit right in the middle of the feet. <coughs> Perfect because your shoulders are always going to be perpendicular to your spine angle. So you can't get any better than that. That looks really good. Okay. Now, I'm going to split you again right here. Now, the first thing we see, if we're looking through the lens of the camera, we see that that right arm is up just a little bit too high. Everybody see that? All right. Now, watch the right side of the screen. See how it disappeared? And how we did it is by taking the left shoulder and just raising it up a little bit, give it just a little bit more. The plane of the putting stroke extends from the middle of the ball over your shoulder. If you stay on the plane, your left shoulder is going to stay on that yellow line, both in the back swing and in the forward swing. Putting this putter in motion, watch the left shoulder. How about that? You like that? If you like perfect, you're going to like that. <laughs> Now let's watch forward. Beautiful. Okay. Good plane right there. Okay. Weird about it, very solid. From the front. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line right up the shaft of the putter. And I'm going to draw a line right across the top of the shoulder. And remember, we're trying to, we actually are trying to get a shoulder tilt of 10. And that is 10. I'm going to measure the inside angle between the shoulders and the shaft of the putter. Your start position is at 85 degrees. That's right on the upper end of where the tour players are. They're 75 to 85. And all that means um, is that the shaft of the putter may be a little bit back. Okay. I'd, I'd like to see the shaft point a little bit more toward, say, the left ear. Now, we're starting at 85, so I'm going to take the putter back to the middle of the back swing. And then we're going to another line, right up the shaft of the putter. Oops. And
through in 88. We started in 85, you only lost three there. That's not bad. That's, that's very good. What if that number was uh, 90, 92? What did that mean? It means somewhere around the impact, these big muscles stopped in the hands and arms. You kept going, but you're, you're fine right there. Uh, I think the biggest thing we did is find the right ball position for it. So it was a lot less work to getting the putter face square and then the possibility of adding an inch to the putter. And I think we do that, you can be off and running. Okay? Well, that was really good. Is there any questions on, on this? Okay. My question, um, you know, teaching women's clinics or you know, what we teach. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> you know, I learned your technique from stock house and came to see you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, is the ball position you said it's like two, is it two inches outside I was talking to the ladies about you in, 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 in the same spot about two inches outside the ball foot? Two to four. Two to in, four inside inside the, the intended line. Yeah. The intended line. Okay. Yeah. So because most people aren't long waisted uh -huh. enough to get out there, and then they'll end up being too close. Most of the time in a ladies' clinic, you're going to see a lot of them out to end, and then you look and they're standing this close to the ball. Yeah. Yes. Right. Thank you. So the power source is the initial motion, is the connection of your upper arms, chest, shoulders, all working. And all of that, yeah. yeah. That's your stroke. I notice his head does uh, move back a lot when he hits that putt from where it started. Right? Oh, those went, oh, great, 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 great. Wouldn't that change face it? Great, great, great. That is perfect. Love it. Okay, we're going to go back to the start. Okay. We're going to go right there. Now we're going to take the putter back, bring it forward. Okay, okay, see that? Everybody see it. All right. The head is not the center of the budding stroke. It used to be when we were using hands and arms. The center of the budding stroke is the base of the neck, right here. So I go up and I draw a small circle. I'm just going to kind of look through to the bottom of the neck. Right there. Now, as he takes it away, a little movement there, and here's a little bit of movement there. But as long as he can keep that in that circle, that's fine. Because what's happening is what's above the base of the neck is counterbalancing the weight of the puck. Okay? So, it's not always bad to have a little motion in there. Good question. Right there. I always wondered, just because like uh, I always heard that you know, if you see that you're seeing too much tilted uh, side bending, you know, as they're putting, you know, versus maybe rotational. And I know you talked a lot about the, the plane and stuff like right. that. Yeah. Usually, I always thought that like yeah, he's all back right. on, you know, that yeah, he's all but like, just falling out of the setup position. That's all. Could that return the cause base returning mm -hmm. inaccuracies and things Remember like that? Remember his first. <coughs> Right. How did he shut the face? By swinging out the end and hanging down. Falling back, yeah. That'll square the face up. Falling back. 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 Than it does on warm season grasses. Warm season grasses, you tend to get just a little less break and a little quicker stop. Now, as far as the break, no, not really. A slope is a slope, and that's about it. Mike, have you ever done any work with uh, the blast putter app, right back to the deal? And so I, what's I, your have, opinion of it? I have, and you know, I like it. But the thing is, it's not calibrated. So if you set up and your aim is five degrees left, it assumes that you're perfect. So 
So let's say at impact, your putter is dead square to the cup. What you're going to get on the readout is that your face is five degrees over. Correct. Yeah, it reads it uh, yeah, I according to, to where, where it started, button. right? Not, not yeah. what the actual target line is. Yeah, right. you know that thing on the top? I tried to even get a reset button. And then you could put a laser down, get it dead center, and then hit the reset. Then you, you'd be calibrated. But as far as the uh, uh, tempo and rhythm, that's, that's really good. Really but if you get so if you get that so your opinion would be like if you did have that person let's say you lasered behind him and you knew that he was perfectly aligned or really really close within a degree yeah. or so that opening and closing of the face you feel like that's a pretty good exactly accurate right. assessment of how yeah, started it all by going. getting him and just getting right. his putter dead side then you've got a, a more accurate reading well, and uh, what factors would lead you to change someone's grip, drastically? Um, while you're putting, I'm watching, and I'm also watching the ball. So if I see an unbalanced grip and I continually see the ball moving left, I'm going to go ahead and move that hand up and try to slow down that rotation. And what about even more, like, something that hands around? Normally, I don't go to the ball unless the player has a little bit of an issue. Uh, left hand low and, and uh, standard grip. You know what? There's really so little difference in how you use it. I don't really do. I don't want to change a player from a standard grip to a left hand low. Now, they may change themselves, and if it's working, fine. Yeah. As it relates to that plumber's neck, what if he uses a double bit? How does that change? Uh, yeah, if he had a not, not offset putter, yeah. he would Where's probably it? have to take that ball position in one third and move it back a little bit. Because he would aim it more. Yeah, because with well, that putter and that hosel, his aim was really good. But now if we put that different putter in his hands, that might change that aim. Would it immediately change his face rotation? Uh, that depends on the balance uh, of the part. Uh, with a, uh, a non-offset, you're probably looking at a, a face balance putter. Sure. Yeah, that would definitely reduce the rotation. But I think once he gets gets in and it gets used to that, sure. I think that's going to tighten up a little bit. You said the window is seven to twelve. Well, it's balance and within one of each other. Gotcha. Okay. Regardless of how much it is, mm -hmm. even if it's oh, if it's ten massive. and ten, that's good balance, which normally means the grip is good. But it's too much rotation, which means either it's the elbows or too much toe weight. Let's just talk putter fitting, and this might be even better for you. But you know, there's a lot of talk of where sight lines are on putter, or shapes of the putter to change aim, and all that kind of BS and stuff like that. Where do you stand on that versus just going ball position? I don't even worry about that. You know, if we can take a putter that's got a certain hosel and get by ball position, get them to aim perfect, that's all they need. So don't, you know, you've never really changed shapes mm -hmm. and things on people. You no, just think you'll uh, it based on just, you know. You know, the, the Callaway triple track ball and putter, and then a putter with lines on it. Sometimes to me, now this is me, it gets a little busy. Just too many things happen. And so I don't like a line on the ball and I don't like any marks on the putter. Okay? <laughs> I've sorted it that way. You said um, the videos start taking effect when the person loses eyesight or eyesight changes. Mm -hmm. Is that because of the prescriptions and their magnification wise? Okay, that, that, that's, that's, that's a good point. If you wear glasses or wear contacts, the aim of your putter is determined by the shape of your eye. So, you start wearing glasses, you put contacts in, you're still going to see it the same. Maybe with your glasses or contacts, you'll see it a little better, a little clearer, but it won't change. But then when, the, when you do get a, a pretty major change in your vision, then this line starts to move. And all you gotta do, if there's any questions, just have somebody check it. You know? 
Get that laser and have somebody check it. Is there a way to correct it? Hmm? Is there a way to correct that or stay the same or is it always going to move the ball forward or back? Hey, Mike, have you ever worked with just having them close my eye? What's that? Have you ever worked with having the player try to close my eye? Close their dominant eye? Close or either eye. Just close, so. close one of the eyes that you're seeing. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, we used to do that a lot. Uh, I haven't done it in a long time, but to close the dominant eye and then see exactly where you're in, that would that also just, that will be fixed by moving the ball position. This is more of like the mental side, so going into the yips. Obviously, if somebody's a bad putter, they feel uncomfortable. And when somebody feels uncomfortable, they tend to want to rush to get out of that uncomfortable state. Is there anything that you've seen or you use other than obviously this program to help people that are, you know, not trusting what they're, what they're doing? Oh, you know, when I get people, I put them into a good setup position, they're always uncomfortable. But I explained to them, you know, there's so many good things about it that you just have to get used to. It. Just have to work it, work it out. And when you do that, you're fine. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let everyone know it is 5:15, and the interest rate by the time everybody needs to get on the road. I wanted to let everybody know. Yeah. Mike, uh, not sure how long you're looking to stick around, but we're welcome to take a few questions. Before you guys leave. Um, I know you know by now, this is my passion. I love putting. And uh, it was really accidental in, in getting into being a putting instructor. But I want to thank you for coming out today because every project I've done in putting comes from a question. Somebody asked me a question and said, you know, that really was a good question. I don't know the answer. I'm going to find out what it is. All of us in this room, when your students ask you questions, they make you a better instructor. So I've gotten more out of today than you guys ever will because of the questions that you ask. So all I want is thank you for that, okay? And if you're around TPC, come on by and see us, okay? Definitely. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the 2023 Coaching and Teaching Summit. Thank you everybody for coming out today. We certainly hope uh, everyone enjoyed all of our speakers. I know we'll uh, be in contact with everybody soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.